Item number, SCP-847, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-847 is to be kept in a reinforced, modified humanoid containment chamber. For the purpose of ongoing behavioral studies, the room is to be fully furnished with a bed, dresser, couch, table, chair, full-length mirror, sink, shower, and toilet. The floor of the chamber is to be constructed with one centimeter exposed beams of copper, which can be electrified remotely to a minimum 50 kilovolt potential. A 50 centimeter squared safe zone at the rear right corner of the containment chamber is to remain free of copper beams in the case of personnel inside containment during disabling of SCP-847. No meals are to be provided. All personnel posted to SCP-847 must be armed with a shock baton rated at 30 kV or greater. Only XY males identifying as such are to be assigned to or permitted within a 50 meter radius of SCP-847. Note: Individuals with Kleinfelter or Turner syndromes have not been tested with SCP-847 at this time and should not be considered eligible candidates for SCP-847 duties. After the results of Experiment 847-G, upon order of the Ethics Committee, intersex, transgender, and non-binary personnel are prohibited from working with, handling, or approaching SCP-847 for their own safety and well-being. When assigning personnel to SCP-847, Preference is to be given to men who are not sexually attracted to women. Description SCP-847 is a human female mannequin, 156 centimeters tall and 27 kilograms in mass, constructed of human hair and an unknown composite fibrous polymer that abrades and shatters similarly to porcelain. Exploratory laparoscopy of SCP-847 shows the presence of internal structures resembling an incomplete set of bones, organs, and major blood vessels composed of the same polymer. Small amounts of a black volatile resin similar to plastination compounds leak from the eyes and damaged regions of the mannequin. SCP-847 is normally at some level of disrepair with shattered areas on the torso, head, and limbs. See Addendum 847-B for details. SCP-847 is animate and moves with erratic, stiff motions while shuddering to maintain balance. It demonstrates different behaviors depending on the genotypical sex and identified gender of nearby humans. These behavioral patterns are grouped as Pattern Z, Pattern Y, and Pattern X. Pattern Z behaviors occur when there is no human within 50 meters. SCP-847 remains inanimate and silent 99.5% of the time under these conditions. When animate, SCP-847 will dress in any available clothes, stand in front of any available full-length mirror, and return to an inanimate state, adopting a pose that showcases the outfit worn. It favors clothing which is designed for young women and which leaves ample skin exposure. On rare occasions, SCP-847 will scratch short messages on nearby surfaces with a finger or, depending on the state of repair, with an available appendage. Messages written since entering Foundation custody are found in Addendum 847-C. Pattern Y behaviors are adopted when there are male subjects but no female subjects within 50 meters, independent of intervening obstacles. Initial stage behaviors involve emitting vocalizations resembling high-pitched whimpering gasps. Note, vocalizations were deeper upon initial acquisition and have become increasingly higher in pitch over time, and adopting more provocative poses. Occasional shudders can be observed during this time. After three to five minutes of the initial stage, 
SCP-847's behavior enters a secondary stage, during which it becomes fully animate, approaching any male subject, adopting a hunched pose, and appearing to look up into the subject's eyes. Vocalizations during this period become more frequent and longer in duration. Subjects are able to handle and freely alter or pose SCP-847 during this time. When posed, it holds the new pose as balance allows. The final stage of Pattern Y behaviors occurs approximately 5 minutes after all subjects have left the 50 meter perimeter of SCP-847. It will then shatter select portions of its body and or extract internal structures. Once shattering or extraction is complete, it emits sobbing vocalizations and returns to Pattern Z behaviors. Pattern X behaviors occur when any female subject approaches within 50 meters, independent of intervening obstacles, whether male subjects are present or not. SCP-847 will emit vocalizations resembling distressed grunts and screeches, immediately animate, and physically attack the woman. During Pattern X behaviors, SCP-847's strength and speed are greatly increased with sprints of up to 45 kilometers per hour and exertion of 40 kilonewtons of force having been measured. During an attack, SCP-847 will occasionally shatter an appendage, usually a finger or toe, in order to produce a sharp edge. Furthermore, plastination resin is released from its eyes, mouth, and shattered sections of its body. Resin falling in open wounds results in a quick hardening of soft tissues that spread until the victim's body reaches a composition of a similar polymer as SCP-847. Following plastination, SCP-847 will harvest selected body parts from the victim, corresponding to damaged sections of its own body. It will fuse these parts to its body via the resin. Not all damaged sections will be repaired in this way. Upon completion of harvesting, SCP-847 will return to Pattern Y or Pattern Z behaviors. The resin produced by SCP-847 has been shown to have its anomalous plastination effects occur only when applied to soft tissues of women. The resin has no effect on cadaverous, non-human, or male tissue. Application of high-voltage electricity in excess of 10 kV will cause a temporary solidification of the resin, resulting in SCP-847 becoming inanimate for approximately 5 minutes, regardless of the behavior pattern expressed at the time. Addendum 847-A Recovery Log A Federal Human Trafficking Investigation led to the discovery of SCP-847 in the basement of an abandoned department store in Las Vegas, Nevada on 8-23-1983, surrounded by partially disassembled and broken non-anomalous female mannequins wrapped in plastic sheets. FBI agents on the scene witnessed SCP-847 exhibit Pattern Y behaviors. Initially thinking it a trafficking victim, agents moved in to assist. SCP-847 then switched to Pattern X and attacked one of the agents. The agent subdued SCP-847 with her stun gun, leading to the discovery of high-voltage electricity as a tool for containment, and was evacuated from the basement. The UIU was informed of the situation. Foundation agents were contacted through regular channels, and SCP-847 was secured. Despite signs of human habitation, the trafficking victims were never found. Addendum 847-B Shattering Event Log Notable shattering events are listed below. Due to the shattering and harvesting behaviors of SCP-847, it has significantly altered appearance since entering Foundation custody. See photos and log for different stages of completion. Date 8-27-1983 Description of Event SCP-847 shatters chest after researchers leave containment. Researcher's Notes Researcher R was heard to verbally note, quote, unrealistic proportions, end quote, in the containment chamber during initial placement. 
Researchers are advised to avoid any verbal commentary regarding SCP-847 while in the containment chamber. Replacement harvested 9-12-1983. Date, 5-14-1984. Description of event. SCP-847 shatters nose after experiment 847-E with D-8334. Researchers notes, as part of regular testing protocol, subjects are not informed of SCP-847 shattering behavior after the subject leaves the containment chamber. See partial debriefing interview below. Doctor, is there anything about the appearance of SCP-847 that you particularly noticed? D-8334. You mean other than being a living, breathing mannequin? Well, uh, her nose looks funny. You know how those nostrils just flare out like that? They're just pits, not covered nicely. Doctor, did you say anything regarding SCP-847's nose to it? D-8334. Nothing. She's not someone you can talk to. Doesn't talk back, but doesn't listen either. Replacement harvested 10-20-1984. At the conclusion of this harvest, female D-class testing with SCP-847 was prohibited on the order of the Ethics Committee. Date, 4-21-1995. Description of event. SCP-847 tears out all head hair and extracts liver after Experiment 847-J with D-13928. Researcher's Notes. See partial debriefing interview below. Doctor, did you make any comment about SCP-847's hair? D-13928 laughs. I know, right? The 80s are over. Heck, that was almost 70s. Doctor, please answer the question. D-13928, you got it all on film. Nah, I didn't say much of anything. I was just hella impressed with an actual living doll. Real fine piece of ass, too. I suppose I can't take her drinking, though, being plastic and all. And me still locked up, of course. Doctor. Well, thank you, D-13928. We're done here. D-13928. You're welcome. You think we can run this experiment again sometime? Hair replaced 7-13-2013. Liver replaced 8-12-2013. Date. 3-1-2005. Description of event. SCP-847 tears out all pubic hair during a period of pattern Z behavior. Researchers notes. Of note is that this is the only shattering event that has not been linked to a pattern Y period. SCP-847 has not attempted replacement. Date 9-23-2013 Description of event SCP-847 extracts brain, eyes, clavicle, and shatters hands. Researchers notes SCP-847 had become fully intact under researcher Tyler Jensen's supervision. In the interest of reducing SCP-847's capabilities, a test was authorized with D-7294, chosen because he had been convicted of multiple murders of a sexual nature. Shattering event lasted 45 minutes, with SCP-847 emitting novel screeching vocalizations throughout. Partial debriefing interview follows. Note. On 9-22-2013, researcher Tyler Jensen was reprimanded, discharged, and stripped of all standing with the Foundation due to multiple ethics committee and standard procedure violations that resulted, over a period of two months, in the death of nine D-Class personnel, and ended with Jensen effecting the containment breach of SCP-847, resulting in an additional two fatalities. End note. In the interest of reducing SCP-847's capabilities, a test was authorized with D-7294, chosen because he had been convicted of multiple murders of a sexual nature. 
Shattering event lasted 45 minutes, with SCP-847 emitting novel screeching vocalizations throughout. Partial debriefing interview follows. Doctor, D-7294, please state your opinion of SCP-847. D-7294, cute. It knows its place. Doctor, please elaborate. D-7294, the way it squeals and grovels. It knows what it's there for. Pity it does a lousy job. Doctor, in what way? D-7294, it doesn't follow orders. Yes, you can pose it, humiliate it, but it doesn't do much more than mule anyway. I had to break off a finger just to see if it mattered. It didn't. You know, it's ironic. You dream your entire life of finding a woman who's that compliant, that devoid of thought, that helpless to your every whim. And when you find her, she's just a useless mannequin who can't do anything. Doctor, thank you, D-7294. We're done here. Guards, please escort D-7294 back to his cell. Addendum 847-C Message Log Below is a log of all messages written by SCP-847 to date, while in Foundation custody. Attempts to communicate with SCP-847 have met with failure. SCP-847 does not use words when vocalizing, and does not respond to questions asked by personnel, whether spoken or written. 8-25-1983 Come back. 10-13-1984 I can do better. 3-9-1986 Where are you? 5-18-1988 where is my prince? 721, 1990. I can change. 10 5, 1996. You can own me. 2 12, 1998. You're my master. 6 8, 2001. Don't leave me. 4 25, 2004. Whatever you want. 4-15-2009 1979 to 2009 4 2009 Too old 4 2009 I can be young for you 12-3-2011 What's wrong with me? 3-8-2013 I'm sorry I'm worthless 8 31 2015 Daddy, I'll be good. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-846, Robo Dude, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.